Dude, what's up? Welcome to the Science Network News. I'm Dr. Seijin, along with Benny Jean and nobody. And today, we'll be talking about earthquakes. Now, these things are radical. For people who aren't touched by the effect of them, they can check you up until you're like, Whoa! And, Whoa! And, Ah! They're usually a, the effect of plate movement, including tectonic plates smashing together, pulling apart, and sliding right past each other. To learn a bit more about these plates, let's hand it over to Benny Jean. Later, bros! Howdy, y'all! The name's Benny Jean! I've been called here because I'm getting paid and to increase your knowledge of earthquakes. These things will make you shake like a chihuahua with stage fright. Now, how can we tell where and when earthquakes will occur? Well, usually they occur at the boundaries of plates. That's why where the Pacific and North American plates converge, it makes a lot of earthquakes in California. That's why towards the middle of our country, like the great state of Kentucky, we're barely ever exposed to earthquakes. However, we do get a lot of tornadoes. Quit getting sidetracked, dude. Be quiet, you mean Mother Hubbard. This is my segment. Okay, dude. Chill. Alright, where was I? Oh yeah, these quakes can be caused by many different things, but they can also cause their own natural disasters. Take a tsunami, for example. When an earthquake occurs in a subduction zone, it can cause tsunamis. How? I'm so glad you asked. Friction between the subducting plate and the overriding plate is huge. Eventually, these two plates become prevented from actually moving any further from a section of friction. However, this causes a lot of energy to build up, kind of like a spring. Eventually, the plates snap past the point of friction. The sudden movement can cause some huge waves of water, or a tsunami. That is a lot of science. I know, right? I wanted to be a cattle farmer, but Ma insisted I go to them universities. Do you like it? No. Well, it's time for your segment to end. Oh yeah, well, see you next time. Now that we're back from Snoresville, it's time for the weather. Well, we've got rolling in, nobody. Hi everyone, I'm nobody. And nobody's perfect. Ooh. Don't tell me what I can't say. Anyways, this week is perfectly fine for the U.S. However, in Chile, not very good. They're going to be getting a rain of ash all over the place. The volcano has erupted three times in the past 12 days. It's quite abnormal. And it's getting to be too much for the communities around the volcano. And it's also contaminating the drinking water they drink. It's not a good time for Chile, but they're doing what they can to keep going strong. Well, that's all for me. On behalf of everyone here at Science Network News, we thank you for your gnarly support and hope to see you enjoyed today's broadcast.